spell is a blessing, but also a mission to the poor and the children. We bring his salvation to the rest of the world, his message of compassion to Happy Easter po sa ating lahat. Ito na po ang pinakaaantay natin. Pinaghandaan natin ng matagal, apatapong araw ng Kwaresma. Ito po yung inaabang-abangan natin, ang tagumpay ni Jesus. At ganun din ang tagumpay ng ating pananampalataya. Dito po makikita natin na ang pagmamahal ay nagtatagumpay. Minahal tayo ni Jesus hanggang sa kamatayan at hindi siya nanatiling patay. Nagtagumpay siya. Siya ay muling nabuhay. Kaya sa ating pong nararanasan ngayon ng mga kahirapan sa buhay, manalig po tayo at patuloy na magmahal Magmahal sa Diyos. Magmahal sa kapwa. Yan po'y magdadala ng tagumpay at ng bagong buhay. Happy Easter po sa inyong lahat.
Queridos hermanos y hermanas, me alegra poder unirme a través de este video mensaje a la celebración por el quinto centenario del inicio de la evangelización en Filipinas. Sé que ustedes han estado preparándose durante mucho tiempo para vivir este acontecimiento y que en estos días lo celebran de manera especial congregados en el segundo encuentro misionero nacional. Quisiera compartir con ustedes tres misterios de nuestra fe que caracterizan las raíces más profundas cristianas de vuestro pueblo. Nazaret, la cruz y Pentecostés. Contemplemos Nazaret, la ternura del santo niño, que es símbolo de la llegada del cristianismo a vuestro archipiélago. Nos remite a la vida oculta de la Sagrada Familia en Nazaret. María y José educaron con amor al niño Jesús. También ustedes, abriendo las puertas de sus familias al santo niño, podrán transmitir a sus hijos la fe que han recibido de sus padres. Gracias por ese profundo sentido de familia, de comunidad, de fraternidad que los mantiene unidos, que los mantiene firmes en la fe, alegres en la esperanza, solícitos en la caridad. Todos ustedes, pueblo de Dios que peregrina en Filipinas, pastores y fieles, son también un pueblo que sabe acompañar a Jesús el Nazareno, por el camino de la cruz. La cruz. ¿Cuántos momentos difíciles han sufrido ustedes? Pienso sobre todo en estos años de inmediata preparación para el jubileo. Terremotos, tifones, erupciones volcánicas y la pandemia del COVID-19. Pero a pesar de todo el dolor y la devastación, han sabido cargar la cruz y seguir caminando. Han padecido mucho, pero también se han levantado, una y otra vez. Siguen trabajando, reconstruyendo, ayudándose unos a otros como buenos sireneos. Gracias también por el testimonio de esa fortaleza y confianza en Dios que nunca los abandona. Gracias por vuestra paciencia, por vuestro mirar siempre adelante en medio de las dificultades y seguir caminando. Gracias. Finalmente, Pentecostés. Pentecostés es el punto de llegada y por otro lado es el nuevo inicio. Hay una persona que marca este, este itinerario y estuvo, estuvo siempre justo a Jesús, cuando era un niño en Nazaret, desde ahí, y también acompañándolo en el momento más difícil de su vida al pie de la cruz. Esta persona es su madre, María. Y María, la madre de Jesús, y Madre Nuestra, también estuvo junto a los apóstoles el día de Pentecostés, rezando y esperando la llegada del Espíritu Santo. Cuando lo recibieron, salieron sin miedo a anunciar el Evangelio a todos los rincones de la tierra. María está siempre con todos ustedes. Es la Madre que no abandona. Ella los ha acompañado hasta aquí, y ahora le pedimos que interceda por este nuevo Pentecostés de la Iglesia en Filipinas. Así que no nos olvidemos estas tres palabras que marcan tres hitos en vuestra historia. Nazaret, la cruz y Pentecostés. Durante este año jubilar, nos guían las palabras de Jesús, 
lo que han recibido gratis, entreguenlo también gratis. Estas palabras son una invitación para agradecer a Dios por las personas que les han transmitido la fe. Y soy testigo que ustedes saben transmitir la fe y lo hacen bien, sea en vuestra patria, sea afuera. Agradecer el don de la fe. Agradecer a Dios por las personas que les han dado la fe a ustedes y por las personas a quienes ustedes van a transmitir la fe. Renovando el deseo de evangelizar, de llegar a otros y llevarles la esperanza y la alegría del Evangelio. Queridos amigos, recuerdo mi visita a vuestro país con mucho cariño, no olvido aquel encuentro final de casi 7 millones de personas. Ustedes son generosos, son abundantes, saben cómo se hace la fiesta de la fe. No pierdan eso, aún en medio de las dificultades. En esos encuentros multitudinarios, los que expresaron que este don de la fe que han recibido dicen que quieren seguir compartiéndolo y anunciándolo a todos. No tengan miedo, en esta misión no están solos. Los acompañan dos grandes santos de vuestras tierras, San Pedro Palunzot y San Lorenzo Ruiz, dos santos catequistas que supieron dar gratuitamente lo que gratuitamente habían recibido, la vida y la fe en Jesús. Sigan adelante, el Papa los acompaña, que Jesús los bendiga, bendiga a todo el pueblo filipino y que la Virgen Santa los cuide. Y que el Santo Niño siempre esté con ustedes. Y por favor, no se olviden de rezar por mí. Muchas gracias.
before the Mass. Prepare yourselves well for it. Do not watch it with a cup of coffee in hand. Read the Mass readings to prepare yourselves. Think what you are to thank the Lord for and what to offer to Him this Mass. Remember, you are praying this Eucharist with many other fellow Catholics. During the Mass Stay in reverent gesture throughout the Mass. Pray with the whole family. Join in prayers, response, and singing. At the time of communion, make a spiritual communion. After the Mass, take some moments of silence to read again the scriptural readings and reflect. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The love of the Father, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Glory to you, Father, who called us out of darkness into your light. Your love endures forever. Glory to you, Lord, strong, majestic, and holy, worthy of praise, worker of wonders. Your love endures forever. Glory to you, Lord, you who are tender, Father of all. You are over all and through all, and you live in all. Your love endures forever. Dearly beloved brothers and sisters, with eyes fixed on the risen Lord Jesus, the great and sure sign of the Father's love for us, today, the solemn feast of Christ's resurrection, we inaugurate Jubilee year of the 500 years of Christianity in our country. In communion with all the churches in our country, this celebration marks the solemn beginning of the Jubilee year in our local church, a prelude to the profound experience of grace and reconciliation that awaits us this year. 
we shall joyfully listen to the gospel of salvation that Christ the Lord, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, continually proclaims throughout the world, inviting us to rejoice in His love, a love announced again and again in every creature on earth. Let us pray. O God, who bring us to participate in the mystery of the passion and resurrection of your Son, grant, we pray, that strengthened by the spirit of adoption as your children, we may always walk in newness of life. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord! The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they all saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. From the CBCP pastoral letter celebrating the 500th year of Christianity in the Philippines. Let this year be a year of looking back in history so that we can understand better who we are in the present as communities of disciples and an opportunity also to look forward in the next 500 years with the same missionary seal that made it possible for us to receive the Christian faith. What we receive without cost is also what we give without cost. Cardinal Tagle expressed this so well when he said, the gift must continue being a gift. If it is kept for oneself, it ceases to be a gift. By God's mysterious design, the gift of faith we have received is now being shared by the millions of Christian Filipino migrants in the different parts of the world. It is their zeal that must move us who have stayed in the homeland to ask ourselves how we are sharing this gift. To repeat the words of the Holy Father, how we are caring for those who are hurting and living on the fringes of life. Brothers and sisters, let us go forth in the name of Christ. He is the way that leads us in the year of grace and thanksgiving.
open the gates of justice, we shall enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the Lord's gate. Let us enter through it and obtain mercy and salvation.
gloria in excelsis Deo. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea. Beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us. 
the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. This is the day of the Lord has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out the old yeast so that you may become a fresh batch of dough, inasmuch as you are unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Christians to the Paschal victim, offer your thankful praises. A lamb the sheep redeems, Christ who only is sinless, reconciles sinners to the Father. Death and life have contended in that, bat, in that combat stupendous. The Prince of Life who died reigns immortal. Speak, Mary, declaring what you saw, wayfaring. The tomb of Christ who is living, the glory of Jesus' resurrection, bright angels attesting, the shroud and napkin resting. Yes, Christ my hope is arisen. To Galilee he goes before you. Christ indeed from death is risen, our new life obtaining. 
Have mercy, Victor King, ever reigning. Amen. Alleluia. lamb has been sacrificed. Let us then feast with joy in the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. It was very early on the first day of the week and still dark when Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been moved away from the tomb and came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter set out with the other disciple to go to the tomb. They ran together, but the other disciple, running faster than Peter, reached the tomb first. He bent down and saw the linen cloth lying on the ground, but did not go in. Simon Peter, who was following now, came up, went right into the tomb, saw the linen cloth on the ground, and also the cloth that had been over his head. This was not the linen cloth, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in. He saw and he believed. Till this moment, they had failed to understand the teaching of Scripture that he must rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing.
The Lord is risen. Alleluia! Ito po ang pagdiriwang. Ang dakilang pagdiriwang. Ang pinakadakilang pagdiriwang ng tagumpay ni Heso Kristo. Binuhos na ng kasamaan ang lahat ng lakas niya. Pinatay niya si Jesus at totoong namatay si Jesus. Pero bumangon siyang muli. Siya ay muling nabuhay. Wala nang ibang lakas pa ang kasamaan. Talagang natalo ni Jesus ang Diablo. Noong unang nagkasala ang tao, sinabi ng Diyos sa ahas, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. Talagang inapaka na ni Jesus ang ulo ng ahas. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? Thanks be to God who gave us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya ngayon ay ang araw ng tagumpay. Ang muling pagkabuhay ay hindi po inaasahan. Si Maria Magdalena ay pumunta sa libingan upang dalawin ang patay. Pero wala doon ang bangkay. Ang kanyang sumbong kay Pedro ay kinuha ang bangkay at hindi niya alam kung saan dinala. Ang bangkay ang hinahanap niya. Napakadakila ng resurrection event. Pero wala tayong actual witness of the act of the resurrection. Walang nakakita na si Jesus ay tumatayo sa pagkamatay. Ang pinakamalapit na patutuo ay sa Ebanghelyo ni Mateo na kanyang sinulat. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him, and became like dead men. Very glorious ang kanyang description. Pero ang nakita ng mga bangkay ay ang anghel, hindi naman si Jesus. Ang pinaka-physical evidence ng pagkabuhay ni Jesus ay ang empty tomb. Walang laman ang libingan. Wala ang bangkay pero nandoon ang mga pinambalot sa bangkay. Ang akala ni Maria Magdalena ay kinuha ang bangkay. Ang sabi ng mga punong seserdote at ng matatanda ng bayan sa mga gwardya na ibinalita sa mga tao na ninakaw ang ng mga alagad ni Jesus ang bangkay. They have to explain away the phenomenon of the empty tomb. Iba naman ang explanation ng anghel. Sabi ng anghel sa mga babae, Pumunta kayo rito upang hanapin ang ipinako sa krus. Wala siya rito. Tingnan ninyo ang kinalalagyan niya. Siya ay muling nabuhay ayon sa kanyang sinabi. Hindi ninakaw, hindi tinago, muling nabuhay. Ano pa ang ibang ebidensya na siya nga ay muling nabuhay maliban sa empty tomb? Hindi ito bunga ng haka-haka ng mga nagmamahal sa kanya kasi sila mismo ay hindi umaasa nito and their initial reactions were fear and disbelief. Kaya ang resurrection hindi po hallucination, 
hindi po bunga ng imagination ng mga alagad. Ang ebidensya para sa kanila ay nagpakita ang Panginoon sa kanila. Pati ito ay hindi nila inaasahan at ang reaksyon nila ay takot. Kaya ang balita ni Maria Magdalena ay, Nakita ko ang Panginoon. At sabi ng mga alagad ay, Nakita siya ni Simon Pedro. At ganun din, sabi nila kay Tomas, We have seen the Lord. Hindi lang nakita, nakikain pa kasama nila. Yan ang patotoo ni Pedro na ating narinig sa ating unang pagbasa. Patotoo niya kay Cornelio, ang Roman officer. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him, After he rose from the dead, hindi lang siya nagpakita, hindi lang siya nagpahipo sa kanila, siya ay sumabay sa kanilang kumain. Pero ilan lang ang nakakita kay Jesus na muling nabuhay? Sinulat ni San Pablo na nagpakita si Jesus kay Simon Pedro. Nagpakita siya sa twelve apostles. Nagpakita siya sa limang daang katao at sa kahuli-hulihan, nagpakita siya kay Pablo mismo. Pero ilan lang sila? Ang pinakatanda ng muling pagkabuhay ay ang pagbabago ng mga alagad. Ito ay nakita ng maraming tao, ng lahat ng tao ang pagbabago ng mga alagad. Kaya hindi lang si Jesus ang nagbago. Ang mga naniniwala sa Kanya ay nagbago din. At malaking pagbabago. Sila ay mga probinsyano, taga Galilea. Walang pinag-aralan. At nakita natin sila'y takot, sila'y duwag nung si Jesus ay pinatay. Pero dahil sa kapangyarihan na galing kay Jesus na muling nabuhay, naging matapang sila at masigasig na nagpahayag na nagsabi pa sila sa mga leaders ng, mga, ng Sanhedrin, ng mga Hudyo, mas dapat kaming sumunod sa Diyos kaysa sa inyo. Hindi kami makakapanahimik dapat naming sabihin ang aming nakita at naranasan. They stood their ground. Kaya nagtaka ang mga leaders ng mga Hudyo. Hindi ba taga-Galilea sila? Hindi ba wala silang pinag-aralan? Ba't ang tapang na nila ngayon? Ang kapangyarihan na bumuhay kay Jesus ay nasa atin din hanggang ngayon. Hindi lang sa mga alagad noon, hanggang ngayon, ito yung ebidensya na siya ay muling nabuhay sa kapangyarihang kumikilos sa atin. Sinulat ni San Pablo, You were buried with Him in baptism, in which you were also raised with Him through faith in the power of God who raised Him from the dead. Ito po ay napatunayan sa kasaysayan ng simbahan, sa kasaysayan ng kaligtasan. Saan ang galing ang lakas ng mga ordinaryong tao, pati na ng mga bata at mga babae, na nag-alay ng kanilang buhay alang-alang kay Jesus, yung ating mga martir. Nagtataka ang tao na ang mga Kristiyano'y umaawit at ngumingiti na hinaharap ang mga liyon. Umaawit at ngumingiti nang sila'y sinusunog sa mga poste at isa-isang sinasaksak. Nakita natin to kay San Lorenzo Ruiz. Takot siya. Gusto siyang tumakas. Kaya nga siya'y sumama sa mga Dominikano at napunta sa Japan. Ngunit nung siya'y 
nakapako na sa krus. Sinabi niya, mayroon man akong isang libong buhay, ang bawat isa nito ay ibibigay ko kay Jesus. Saan ang galing ang tapang ng mga misyonero na pumunta sa mga hindi alam na mga lugar at mga tao at magsalita tungkol kay Jesus? Isipin natin ang mga misyonerong pumunta sa Pilipinas, galing sa Espanya, galing sa Mexico, tumawid ng dalawang ocean na pumunta rito at marangi na ay hindi nakapunta rito. May mga kasaysayan, labing walong misyonero na galing sa Espanya, ang dumating sa Pilipinas ay dalawa. Labing anim ay namatay sa dagat. At sa ating panahon ngayon, saan nang gagaling ang lakas ng loob ng mga ordinaryong manggagawa, ng mga katutubo, ng mga urban poor, ng mga mangingisda, ngayon na patuloy na naninindigan sa kanilang karapatan at mag-organize sa harap ng mga red tagging at pagpapaslang ng mga makapangyarihang military structures. Ang lakas na yan ay galing kay Jesus na muling nabuhay. Hindi yan matatalo ng mga nagpapapatay sa kanila. O death, Where is your victory? Saan nang gagaling ang patuloy na pagsisikap ng mga tao na kahit na walang kinahinanatnan ang mga strategies na ginagamit na supilin ang COVID-19 na walang magawa kundi mag-curfew at mag-lockdown. Ngunit ang mga tao ay hindi nawawala ng pag-asa Patuloy silang nakikibaka, naghahanap buhay upang suportahan ang kanilang mga pamilya. Iyan po ay galing kay Jesus na muling nabuhay. Lahat ng pagsisikap para sa buhay, para sa katotohanan, para sa pag-ibig at katarungan, yan ay galing kay Jesus na muling nabuhay. Patuloy na lumalawak ang gawain ng pagliligtas ni Jesus na mamalayan man natin o hindi. Alam man natin o hindi na ginagamit tayo ng Diyos. Kumikilo siya sa atin. Buhay si Jesus. Kumikilo siya. Ngayong araw ay ginugunita at ipinagdiriwang natin ang 500 Years ng pagkilos ni Jesus sa ating bansa sa Pilipinas. Today is the official opening all over the country of the 500th anniversary of Christianity in our land. Tayo ay mga Kristiano, hindi lang dahil sa mga misyonero o sa mga Kastila. Marami din silang kapalpakan at pagsasamantalang ginawa sa ating mga ninuno. Pero sa kabila nito, tinanggap, pinanghawakan, tinanim ang pananampalataya kay Kristo sa ating kapuluan. Ang ating pagiging Kristiyano ay talagang gawain ng Diyos. Bunga yan ng kapangyarihan na galing kay Jesus. Kaya ang unang damdamin na bumubukal sa ating puso sa pagdiriwang na ito ay salamat sa Diyos. We are grateful for the gift. Ngayong araw na binubuksan natin ang 500 years ng commemoration ng pagdating na pananampalataya, sa lahat ng mga dioceses, binubuksan ang jubilee doors ng mga cathedrals. Kaya kahit na nasa ECQ tayo sa Maynila, nakikiisa tayo sa buong bansa na binubuksan ang ating Jubilee Door ng ating Manila Cathedral. Ang Jubilee Door ay ang sagisag ng mga biyaya na mapapa sa atin kapag tayo ay pumapasok sa simbahang ito. Ito po ay isa lang sa labindalawang Jubilee Churches or Pilgrim Churches 
na pinagkaloob ng Roma sa ating Archdiocese. Sa mga susunod na mga araw, bubuksan din natin ang mga Jubilee Doors ng iba pang mga pilgrim churches. Inaanyayahan tayong pumasok sa simbahan. Doon magsisi, doon magdasal, doon tumanggap ng bendisyon ng Diyos. Buong taon po natin matatanggap ang indulgences sa mga Jubilee Churches. Let us schedule our visits to these churches when the restrictions are relaxed. The more difficulties we meet, the more we cling to God's grace and power. Naranasan po natin sa pandemic na ito na may hina pala ang kapangyarihan ng science. Hindi mahanapan ng solusyon ang sakit na ito kahit na binubuhusan ng billions of dollars sa research. Hanggang ngayon, ang ating mga vaccine ay experimental pa lang. May hina pala ang kapangyarihan ng business at ng market. Marami ay nagsasara na at nalulugi. May hina pala ang namumuno sa atin. Matapang lang magsalita at magbanta. Wala namang magawang ikabubuti natin. Mas lumala pa nga ang ating kalagayan. Pinabayaan na natin ang Diyos noon. Mas pinansin natin yung market. Mas pinansin natin ang science. Mas pinansin natin ang mga political powers. Pinabayaan natin ang Diyos. Isinintabi natin siya. Itinabi natin siya. Subukan naman natin ngayon ang kanyang kapangyarihan. Kumilos tayo ayon sa kanyang paraan. Manalig tayo sa Kanya. Mamatay sa kasamaan upang mabuhay sa Diyos. Itakwil si Satanas at ang kanyang mga pamamaraan tulad ng kasinungalingan, tulad ng pagpatay at pagkamakasarili at mas kumapit sa Diyos. Hindi po masasayang ang ating effort na sumunod sa Diyos. Iyan ang leksyon ng resurrection. Kaya pagkatapos nito, sasariwain natin ang ating pangako sa binyag. At sa pangakong ito, let us be forceful in saying, I reject Satan. I reject sin. I reject all the temptations to do evil. At mas may conviction na lumapit tayo sa Diyos. At tanggapin natin siya sa ating buhay. Subukin natin ang kapangyarihan ng Diyos. Diyan po natin mararanasan ang tunay na kaligtasan, ang bagong buhay na nag-aantay sa atin. Please all stand. We have been renewed by our following of the Lord in His passion, death, and resurrection. We have been restored to grace by the work of redemption of Jesus in the waters of baptism. Let us ask the Lord to strengthen us in faith and make us His true witnesses. We thank the Lord for the gift of faith in our country among our people. We look back with gratitude for the gift of faith granted to our shores 500 years ago. We pray that this growth in us 
This grows in us until we become what we shall be in the Lord's glory. So, dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with Him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us the forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Christ Jesus, the source of our hope, has been raised from the dead. 
with thankful praise, let us offer these petitions as we say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been raised up with Christ and baptism, that they rejoice in God's merciful love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For this assembly and our people, that we rejoice in God's triumph over sin and death in the sacrament of baptism and in the Christian faith planted in the shores of our country 500 years ago. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that this Jubilee year may be a year of grace and renewal in faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who serve in public office, that they rejoice in God's call for justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, that they rejoice in God's deliverance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they rejoice in God's gift of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In a few moments of silence, we pray for our own intentions. Most merciful God, your loving plan of salvation finds its glorious fulfillment in the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Extend that saving power throughout our lives and our world, this Easter day and every day, both now and forever. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty in our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her, sp her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should, should enter under, under my roof, roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O, Lord, o God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, with grateful hearts, we are all invited to celebrate the 500 years of Christianity in our country. The gift of indulgence granted by His Holiness Pope Francis will accompany us during this year of grace. We have designated pilgrim churches in our archdiocese, wherein the Jubilee door will be opened for granting the plenary indulgence throughout the Jubilee year. Minor Basilica of the Immaculate Conception, Manila Cathedral, Manila. Minor Basilica of the Black Nazarene, Quiapo Church, Manila. Archdiocese and Shrine of Nuestra Señora de Guia, Manila. Archdiocese and Shrine of Santo Nino, Manila. San Pablo Apostol Parish, Manila. National Shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe, Makati City. Saints Peter and Paul Parish, Makati City. Santa Clara de Montefalco Parish, Pasay City. San Felipe Neri Parish, Mandaluyong City. St. John the Baptist Parish, San Juan City. Immaculate Conception Parish, San Agustin Church, Intramuros, Manila. Minor Basilica of San Lorenzo Ruiz, Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary Parish, Binondo, Manila. From the heart of the Trinity, from the depths of the mystery of God, the great river of mercy wells up and overflows unceasingly. It is a spring that will never run dry, no matter how many people draw from it. We now turn our thoughts to Mary, the Mother of Mercy. May her merciful gaze be upon us throughout this holy year so that all of us may rediscover the joy of God's tenderness. Please be seated. Let me read to you my message for this Easter of 2021, especially to the Archdiocese of Manila. Happy Easter to all. Alleluia. Easter is Easter, with pandemic or not. Easter is Easter, 
with lockdowns or not. Easter is the assurance of victory. Any act of love and sacrifice for others will bring new life. We need this message in our time when so many acts of love, service to others, and prayers are being offered. We witness this among our medical frontliners who are tired, in danger, and not adequately compensated. We see this among family members who combat and serve, who comfort and serve those of their families who are sick. We admire the daily wage earners who continue to work, putting themselves to daily risk to support their families. We are aware of prayer requests and promises of prayers in many social media accounts. We are all enveloped in prayers these days. All of these efforts and goodwill join in the victory of the resurrection. Jesus' new life shows us that God rewards all acts of love and sacrifice. God blesses all the good that is being done. So Easter is not only about Jesus. It also is about us. Jesus is the guarantee that a new life and better day is coming. Let us not lose hope. We continue to strive because we know with God's help that we shall overcome. Praise God who gives us victory over death, over sickness, over evil. This is the real meaning of Easter. Today, we open the 500th anniversary of the gift of the Christian faith to our country. We humbly accept this gift and in gratitude, we will generously share this faith to others. We are gifted to give. Together with the disciples, we enthusiastically share with others. We have seen the Lord. Happy Easter to one and all. Please stand. My dear people of God, in the spirit of gratitude to God, the giver of all graces, on the occasion of the opening of the Jubilee year of the 500 years of Christianity, by the grace of God and the mandate of the Supreme Pontiff, His Excellency Roderick S. Pabilio, Apostolic Administrator of Manila, will grant a plenary indulgence in the usual form of the Church to all here present and all who are devoutly taking part in the celebration, who are truly sorry for their sins, who have gone to confession and have received Holy Communion. Pray therefore to God for the welfare of our Most Holy Father, Francis, the Pope by divine providence, and for our Holy Mother, the Church, and strive by holiness of life to walk in full communion with it. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for God's blessing. May Blessed Mary, Ever Virgin, Saint Michael the Archangel, Saint John the Baptist, the Apostles Peter and Paul, and all the saints, assist you with their merits and prayers. Amen. And may Almighty and merciful God forgive you from all sins. Amen. And may He help you persevere in fruitful penance, good example, and sincere charity. Amen. May Jesus the Christ, the Savior, lead you to everlasting life. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace and announce the good news to all. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>